Hey, this is Key from Save the Rust. So today we're gonna to continue working on that Springer. It's a Harley 45 Springer. And uh, we've taken it from an extended chopper Springer from the 70s and we're going right back to stock. One of the first things I wanna show you though, um, which is concerning the jig and how I built it and uh, some of the differences we're gonna to have to look at. So follow along. So, if you're thinking about building a jig like this, one of the first things you're gonna to wanna to do is go to any of the service manuals that Harley provides. So you'll see in these service manuals, they actually have um, some frame geometry set up and how to check for fork alignment. It gives you some ideas of diameter, spacing, etc. okay? In previous videos, I was talking about Palmer, and I should clarify this. We're talking about Bruce Palmer. He has wrote, you know, these books on how to restore your Harley Davidson. This is like uh, series one. This is like series three, and how to restore your military Harley Davidson. And there's a lot of uh, unique WLC stuff in here. The amount of information that he's acquired is outstanding it's it's you know it's so happy that someone actually took the time to do the research um this is the first book you can see how much more information on the third and i think he has a fourth coming out so in his books he's got a incredible amount of information on how to decipher years um some of the different unique parts on it and uh and stuff like um in one of my videos, I, I talked about a swept forward. You can see how the straight line through doesn't actually go to the center of the hole, which one this one does. What I'm saying is, if you're thinking about do, doing any Harley restoration or repair, get these books. It's unbelievable. It tells you how the brake anchors here, just to give you an idea, how the brake anchors, you know, how they look when they're welded or brazed. I mean, it goes off on the, on the numbering system for the... Uh, front legs, it, it's uh, unbelievable. So pick these up if you haven't yet. Um, and this is where you start with figuring out how to build a, a jig. Because you, again, you wanna make sure you're starting with a Springer, let's say um, that's at least straight and you can get that some of that information off your service manuals or these books to make start making the jig because you want to make sure you didn't grab a you know the uh, swept forward one and make a jig and then you're trying to uh fix um post 40 uh springers which are have a their the alignment here is centered so there's a lot of information you know i'm just touching on it and um again i used a really nice fork straight fork to make this jig um, what I wanted to show you was I put this big twin jig, uh, big twin Springer in the jig. I mean, it has some inch issues, but um, on the 45 Springer, it's got a smaller neck, a, st a smaller stem, and this has a larger stem. So just because of that, where this hits, I'm going to have to adjust this and bring it down because you can see how much it off. A little bit here goes a lot here. It changes the height. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna loosen this off, bring it down, and then do our measurements, and we can incorporate that um, onto the onto my uh, my jig. But I just wanted to show you that 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 little difference um, between having a, a, a smaller diameter stem and a larger diameter stem and where it plays in with everything. Because you're going to have to, if you're making a jig, if you're thinking about making a jig, there's a lot of questions you have to think about. And uh, you know what? Send me, a, put a comment in, or if you have any questions, just shoot me a, 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 you know, shoot me a comment and I'll see if I can figure it out and help you out if you decide to go this way. So one of the things you want to look at too, again, Identify the year of your Springer, and you're going to want to, if you're going for like a restoration, you're going to do things that were year appropriate. So, um, again, thanks to the Palmer Manual, it tells us 
what years um, the brake anchors, for example, were um, tacked, welded, and brazed, um, partially welded, fully welded. So to give you an idea, um, I think it's 36, mid, uh, uh, 37 to 39. They only had a small little tack here. Now you get, this one's a 39 to 43 because of the weld is, is this large. And then it goes up where the weld is um, more from 43 to 45 and then all the way around in from 46 to 57. So there's ways of identifying these springers um, down to the, you know, pretty close year and it could be a variation of items again grease grease zerk uh, positions um and more i mean there's a science to this it's, you can actually do a lot of research and learn a lot about these things one of the other things i wanted to tell you also was with this adjustment i made here you also have to come into consideration i think it's a uh, 1948 is uh 47 48 they had an offset springer so this is in line so meaning this point this point and this point are all in a line you can see the center of of the the two tubes and the stem are in in line i don't have an example of one at the moment but um they are offset and the stem was offset of this plane here so Another reason that you need adjustment here is to, to have to deal with that because that'll be that'll put the, all the numbers out. So again, if you're thinking about making a, a jig, follow the manual, figure out what you have, the direction you're going, um, WLC, WLA, Big Twin, and look at at the, the year specific if it's if it's a uh, if it leans forward if it's a straight line through like there's all there's so much to, to learn before you just start welding up a jig so i hope i answered a few questions and then make it more complicated but buy your books and do your research and then start building up your jig so a friend of mine saw the video the other day uh, about how i put the uh, chevrons on and uh, reminded me of another way of getting the curvature where I was instead of pulling on it and stuff um, well for one you can use a press I don't have a press here at the shop right now but we do have a vise so what I did is I marked the center line and then I'm going to take this old pin I'm going to lay it right down the center I opened up the jaws of the vice and I'm gonna just literally put this down the center and we'll start manipulating this just want to make sure you're square again always be square I'm going to use the larger side now. And we'll try it on our springer. There. You can start getting the shape here. So we're going to continue with that. You already seen how to do this chevron, so I'm not going to waste your time doing it all over again but we're going to do the same kind of uh work to get this all around once we get this you know a little bit more rounded how we want and we can start forming it around but i thought you'd like that little tip just another way of accomplishing the same goal but a little bit easier fashion one of the things also you can do is use the vise to 
pull the two sides in. So at this point, we got the both chevrons done. I mean, there's a couple little spots I would just like to uh, just detail it a bit more, but I'll do that in the future. We still have to um, braise it just to, for cosmetic more than anything, um, just so it looks just the way it did when it left the factory. Everything looks pretty good. I'm very happy with it. Um, you know, chevrons are all nice and squared. The lines going from the top match on the bottom and uh, it's basically usable. So this piece is basically done other than brazing. So now we have to get to the rear leg. So here's what it should look like. That's what it looks like. So the first thing we gotta do is drill out the bottom to accept the proper stud for the rockers. tight fit so we're at the point where I got the legs in the jig and uh, the top uh, of the springer it's got a couple little chunks out of it here so I'm gonna take some uh, copper I'm just gonna weld this all up and kind of build it up and uh, just before I weld it because then it'll show the weld um, when I want it to look like it's been brazed so again um, some structural and some cosmetic at the same time. So I've got a position so the copper's here and I'm just going to build up this area right here. You can see the copper kind of held its position so i'll just clean up that weld and uh, dress it up and it looks a lot better than it did a lot better i'm still can uh, clean up this edge a little bit better We still have to uh, drill the holes to do the plug weld, so there'll be a lot of welding and blending after. Better, but we still have lots to do. So I'm trying to remember where I put my last uh, plug holes on the previous springer, but I think on this one I'm going to put it right in the front, right on the back on both sides, and then uh, it gives us the opportunity to clean it up a bit more right here and back here where where it had been there was chunks missing. So I'm going to use this uh, die grinder with a 60 grit on the inside just to make sure that everything's 
nice and clean, right where I welded it. So we got everything set up into the jig here. The top portion, we've drilled it for our plug welds and we got the legs all tight. Everything's all good. Uh, So with the front leg welded, we're going to end this video. Thanks for watching. Um, we're going to do one more video about uh, putting the brake anchor on. I hope you found it informative. Um, I tried to touch on a lot of stuff. There's just so much to learn about these springers and, uh, you know, how to put them back as correct as you can. Like and subscribe. Thanks for all the support. And uh, watch for episode five coming up very shortly.